Buzz Talk seemed to me as one of the latest biggest Asian MMOs that had been widely hyped not only by the Asian fans of the genre, but their Western counterparts as well. It has been predicted to become another great competitor to all the current heavyweights in the Western market while being a decent alternative to conventional action RPGs. And, to be honest, I was highly skeptical of its ability to compete with both the genres. Truth be told, the feedback after the initial release of the game was more than positive, stating that Lost Talk provided a fun gaming experience, a flashy and engaging combat that got a lot of players addicted and hooked, while the biggest criticism of it was its pay-to-win nature. But having played a couple of dozen hours and attempted to at least scratch the surface of the endgame, I'd like to argue that the pay-to-win is not the biggest concern of mine. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Alex B, and this is the first time playing, a series where I try a completely new game in the MMO genre, which is completely new for me, to share my first impressions and experiences given by the game. Leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. Today, we are discussing Lost Ark, a Korean MMORPG developed by the Tripod Studio and Smilegate, respective Korean companies notable for their local gaming projects. Since 2019, it's been giving its services to the Korean gamers and obviously, being inspired by the Eastern success, the publishing rights for the Western market have been given to Amazon, one of the most controversial publishers who have yet to deliver a game and not mess up everything in the process. The example of New World speaks for itself, but maybe they'll fix it in future. By the way, leave a comment whether you want me to play and review New World as well, because I'm kinda anxious buying it right now. Despite all the peculiarities of their experiences with the game publishing, Amazon is always a reason to raise at least one red flag and start being skeptical. Further, to be completely honest, I've had some experience playing Lost Ark in the past. During the first weeks of the Western release, I tried playing the game a couple of times and I was bored to death by the tediousness of the questing process and the repetitiveness of the gameplay loop, making the game feel more like a chore and not a fun experience. At the same time, a huge number of players and content creators tended to suggest and during the early and mid-game sections because the end game is the most fun and rewarding stage of Lost Ark. So, our main goal during this playthrough is to squeeze through the campaign sections and try our best to enjoy the latest stages. At the same time, leaving the best parts for the gameplay as a reward for enduring 20 plus hours of tedious gameplay is another red flag that will be addressed further. But for now, let us start our journey on a fresh server with a fresh character. First things first, we start with choosing the class of our character and what do you think we see? Here is the question for 1 million Prima Gems. Your answers are A. Bandit Docking, B. Sandy Socking, C. Gender Locking, and D. Land a Joker. My final answer is C. And we have a winner. Congratulations! 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 Seriously, Asian MMO companies, just stop this BS and make all your characters highly sexualized dolls that have unrealistic body parameters for your players and payers to be able to play with one hand only. But, oh well, it is what it is. I have once again lost my PP privilege and will start playing with Shadow Hunter, a class that seems to be inspired by the Demon Hunter class from Diablo 3. And, to be frank, despite my sarcasm, the character creation screen represents a perfect balance between deeply customizable and easy to use. I decided to make a character look like Bayonetta, as it is the closest resemblance to the cohesive concept of a demon hunter with hypersexualized appearance. And once again, I was impressed by the customization options. It seems you can easily change everything to your taste and preference. What is even better, it doesn't have any bugs, any slowdowns or glitches. It just works, which is a surprise after playing a number of MMOs with slow and clunky functionality. But Lost Ark just works. It loads fairly quickly and after creating the character, it plays a narrative video explaining the story background for our class. And guess what? It doesn't matter almost completely, because not only the story of the character is not being addressed during the campaign, but the NPCs provide the same quests and the same voice lines regardless of the class. The only difference I've noticed with NPCs frowning on my class's ability to turn into a demon, which is a no-no in the world of Lost Ark. But this detail is so minuscule that it doesn't affect anything story-wise and role-playing-wise. Eventually, it follows the character's appearance in the so-called Trixian, an area in between worlds, 
where we meet Beatrice, an angel-like figure telling us that we need to save the world by collecting an array of orcs, capable of sealing the colossal demons responsible for all the evils happening in the world. It's a cliché that is being used even by the greatest action RPGs. Dark Souls 3 is the brightest example. So it works. All of this just works. It's not… I'm not kidding. As long as the gameplay and combat mechanics are okay. The game follows with showcasing the class in full force in order for the player to decide which subclass is more enjoyable to play and showing the percentage of players who have chosen the same class. You can test how the character will play out against crowds of monsters and huge bosses and choose what combat style suits you the best. This is a feature more games need to introduce, especially ones with deep and complex combat mechanics, with a lot of skills and buttons to press. The player needs to know what their end goal in combat approach is going to look like, and Lost Ark satisfies it more than perfectly. Once again, I have chosen the Shadow Hunter class and was immediately thrown to the opening section of the game that starts really strong, with a condensed story and a slow but dynamic introduction to the character movement keys, hot navigation, inventory management, etc. Additionally, it shows the combat and it is the best part of the game, which actually is the only feature that kept me engaged, just enough to tolerate the shortcomings of the campaign. And while the introductory section represents a fairly linear adventure that walks you through the straight corridors of enemies and quest lines, the rest is… let's say it's different, and we'll get to the question in a bit. Main quests and side activities are the major sources of experience for leveling. There are 4 big areas of the main story quest and 10 areas of the so-called world quests that continue the story of the previous 4. It took me approximately 20 plus hours to complete them before reaching level 50, which is the maximum you can get before the endgame and it is too much. But as I had to suffer, you are going to suffer with me too, especially if you are a new player considering to start Lost Ark in the nearest future. We have a destiny. You and I. So, let's see what you may expect during the question. Let's get the example of West Lutera and its main quests. You need to help the fallen prince to reclaim the throne of the kingdom from the usurper, and your main ally is the holy priest, who conceals demonic powers forbidden by the local church. A decent foundation for an exciting story, right? But in reality, what you do is click, click, boom, click, click, boom and progress to the next area. Next is the Eastern Lutera, where the prince becomes a righteous king and tries to address the dangers coming from the demonic legions and their human allies who supported the usurper in the first place. There will be a siege, a demonic boss, a lot of drama and action, but in reality it's click click boom, click click boom. What is worse, there is much more clicking and much less booming and I suspect that a lot of players would prefer the campaign to have otherwise. Eventually, you get your first ship, and you are asked to travel to gather information about all the arcs to seal the demons away. One of the worlds you enter is Tortoik, a home for the Makokos, a little elves who fight for survival against the demonic infestation. The world is bright and atmospheric, the characters are unique and cute looking, but all you do is, once again, click, click, boom, click, click, boom. It would be okay if these levels were short and did not require so much time to progress, but at the end of the day, the overall gameplay loop requires to click the bland and non-memorable NPCs asking me to do the same quests over and over. The quests in Lost Ark are either clicking and moving from one point to the other, hunting a number of monsters or interacting with certain objects, mostly loading various forms of cargo. Suddenly, these are nothing new to the MMOs, but Lost Ark does not have a proper incentive and motivation to do so. In majority of games, the quests are doing at least one of the things. Tell interesting stories with memorable characters. Provide a context for exciting and thrilling combat encounters. Provide meaningful rewards that make you stronger and give a certain sense of achievement. For example, Xenoblade Chronicles has a lot of such side quests, where you need to gather items or hunt monsters, but it is worth the rewards given by the game and it is simply interesting and enjoyable because of the atmospheric and live areas of the game that are full of little details and characteristics that make it extremely immersive. Another example is Hades or Diablo 3, where the combat is the core focus of the game and it takes the biggest percentage of the gameplay. 
it is mostly balanced with character customization and inventory management that always makes grinding enemies fun and rewarding at the end of the day. Lost Ark excels only in the points of combat, while failing completely on the rest too. In majority of cases, the combat encounters feel like a reward for enduring 10 to 15 minutes of mindless clicking from one point to the other on average. Once again, let us address this in more detail. Let us enter one of the beginning zones. We complete an array of such quests, we hunt a number of monsters, and the whole process takes a lot less time than clicking the NPCs, and eventually we get to the dungeon, a combat map with waves of monsters ending with the dungeon boss. And this is the only enjoyable aspect of the gameplay, because even the rewards, in case of being more powerful than the current ones, in majority of cases, look the same, which does not bring any sense of achievement and progression. And it is something worth considering, because you probably won't be getting such intense combat encounters like in Hades or Path of Exile, you'll just get a portion of combat flooded with clicking NPCs. The only quest series that were different are the ones where you're required to infiltrate the enemy bases under disguise, which is so absurd to be honest. The game tries to create a feeling that you are the most powerful warrior who can wield complex weapons and powers to freaking slay demon gods. And still, you need to infiltrate a base of cultists stealthily, because you cannot otherwise for some reason. In other words, just to reiterate, the gameplay loop before the endgame consists of really great, really great combat encounters that are drowned by the filler content. And that's why it was so tiresome and draining for me to grind to the endgame, which, surprise, is extremely better, because it does not have all these fillers on the same level. Before we get to the discussion of the endgame, let us address the mechanical and technical features offered by Lost Ark. Graphics is good and functions great, which in itself provides decent gaming experience despite the game taking a lot of time to launch. But once it takes its time to launch, and the time is longer than many AAA games out there by the way, it loads levels quickly and doesn't have any severe technical issues. A couple of bugs and glitches here and there, sure, but I've experienced just a couple during my 20 hours playthrough. The details of the object and subject are simply one of the best that I've seen in MMO so far, and the character models are greatly designed and realized. For example, I like the designs of the major antagonists of the endgame, the range of demons who vary from erotic-looking vampires and succubi to horrifying clowns and lich mages. The same can be said about the main NPCs in their respective areas. A lot of attention has been given to illustrating their cultural origin, their profession and overall allegiance. The design has actually made the characters distinct in style and appearance. Levels are empty though. Despite being greatly designed and infused with highly quality foliage and various objects, it still feels lifeless in majority of cases. The game references Diablo or Path of Exile in many aspects, creating atmospheric backgrounds for combat, but instead limits the numbers of enemies and inserts boring NPCs with tedious quests instead. And yes, the generic designs of NPCs also washes away any presence or character from main NPCs like Father Armin or away from Annika region. Do you know the way? The combat encounters and dungeons specifically is the part of Lost Ark that was the best. Skills feel powerful, punchy and connect with the enemy's hitboxes perfectly to create a feeling of an overpowered warrior who single-handedly can clear the complete battlefield. The skill management system is also rather good, as it contains a lot of hints and recommendations that are a great feature to have, as it helps the newcomers who is choosing the most effective skills and their combinations for specific occasions. Moreover, it has a recommended button that apparently tracks the most frequently used skills by other players and suggests you do the same, or at least try it if you're new to the game. Similar to the class test drive during the opening, this feature is also a must-have for a lot of MMOs, especially those that have complex and expensive respect and reclass solutions. To be fair, the tiresome quests are not the only parts and tendencies of the Lost Ark that did not let me to immerse into the combat and monster slain. First and foremost, it is the lack of presence of other players and instead it is a complete overflow of bots. There are bots everywhere at every stage of the early game. They disrupt the questing flow as they overcrowd the NPCs and they don't allow to battle monsters in the open areas as they keep on cleaning them up even before they show up. 
and I suspect that these boats are directly connected to the pay to win side of the game, but we'll return to it later. As for now, they are not only disrupting the early gameplay, but it makes it kinda pointless, as they show directly that the experienced players are better off saving their time doing something else and launching bots so they could grind the main quests. And it made me feel like another boat chugging through the campaign as well. This already suggests that the main campaign could have had concentrated 8 hours of fun gameplay instead of all this. Next, we get the sailing mechanic as a means of transportation between the continent. And it feels kinda redundant, especially when the game tosses you around the continents to complete the quests. Maybe there is a teleportation mechanic between the continents, but for one endgame quest I was required to sail 10 real-time minutes to an island, do the click-click boom and return to the main city for clearing endgame dungeon to return to that island without an ability to teleport. Just why Lost Ark? Why? Stronghold mechanic also feels kinda redundant, as it simply feels like a perk that can be used to create one's own hideout and customize it accordingly. And it is not a hideout like in Path of Exile, for example, that is small and concentrated with everything and everyone you need. It's once again a bloated space with vendors, traders and various mechanics that comprise another huge gateway to spending real-world money to progress. Third, just like many other MMOs, gathering and crafting exist, but I couldn't find any meaning to them during my playthrough. I've noticed a lot of bots doing fishing, so maybe there is a certain reward for fishing, but I was not urged to craft or gather items to progress. Instead, I was urged to upgrade my character and the items via various items and processes that I could not understand completely. But what I understand, there are items that affect the weapons and items that affect the skills. Both these types of items can be granted and bought for real money. I've decided to upgrade the skills that increase my Shadowhunter's damage in demon form, as I found it having the most interesting and engaging combat skills and it was fairly easy to use. What was more complex is choosing the non-class perks and passives to upgrade. I decided to go with the all-out passive as it just makes the damage higher and it seems that Lost Ark is all about the damage. On the contrary, the loot left a lot to be desired. Once again, Lost Ark is clearly referencing action RPGs like Diablo, but it misses the point of giving a lot of loot to the player that looks and feels different. Instead, Lost Ark seems to have just a dozen of early game designs of armor and jewelry, and they simply have higher stats instead of giving different looks. And, as you may remember, Lost Ark is definitely focused on the looks of the characters, so why not give more fashion options? Or maybe they're only for sale. These are just the major highlights of my experiences reaching level 50, as the game has a lot of completionist mechanics, a lot of mounts and pets to collect, a lot of NPCs to connect with, and a lot of other mechanics that make it a lot more complex when dug deeper. But for now, let me assume that for the majority of the newcomers, the click-click-boom gameplay should be expected and tolerated with patience, as reaching level 50 is just a premise to get to the endgame. Reaching endgame is also kinda weird. While in various similar games, both of MMO and action RPG genres, there is a self-contained campaign with an introduction to all the required mechanics of the game, a certain final with an epic boss fight, a conclusion to the main story that closes all the narrative points, and other aspects of pacing and narration in modern video games that make the endgame stage more logical. Once again, in Path of Exile, you complete a series of story segments, fight a huge demigod and only after that you get to mapping as an endgame mechanic. In Lost Ark, however, the endgame just happens abruptly, without actually giving the player a feeling that they have reached the highest stage of the game. Instead, we reach level 50, reach the Varan city and are simply given a task to reach the specified gear rank. In other words, after all the stories and challenges, we just need to enchant and enhance the gear so that it meets the requirements to progress to a new area. This is being mainly achieved through the process of honing, a unique way of improving the gear in Lost Ark using the items collected during and after the endgame activities. And let me tell you, these activities are truly and honestly much, much, much better than the previous 50 levels of gameplay. Lost Ark offers the following activities. Chaos Dungeons. Depending on the level, you are being thrown into the middle of the crowd of monsters to slay them all. A lot of fun and satisfying gameplay that I wanted from the first minutes. Just combat. No clicking. 
No questing, just a lot of fun action. Abyssal Dungeons, same concept but for the party of the players. In reality, it seems that the parties are not restricted by the gear levels, as I had high-level players in my party simply clearing the rooms of monsters, while I was left with just following them. Although, it was one of the sources of gold currency, which is the closest item to paid currency. Guardian Raids A series of activities reminded me the concept of the Monster Hunter series, where you need to track, attract, and eventually slay a huge boss monster without seeing its HP pool and any damage figures. Interesting concept, interesting gameplay, not gonna lie. Abyss Raids Locked behind gear level and a quest requirement, which I did not get, but logically I would assume that it's the same as Guardian Raids but in party setting. If it's also not restricted by the gear level, the fun aspect will most probably diminish. Towers Seem to look like the gauntlet type of game, where you need to get to the top of the tower on every level of which there is a pack of monsters or a boss. Really fun experience. These are just five commonly used endgame activities in Lost Ark, and there are definitely more, but I could not unlock them for now because of my gear level. Still, my major point regarding even the aforementioned activities is this should not be a reward for enduring early game. As it is obviously Lost Ark's strongest feature, and it motivates the players to grind through the hordes of monsters to get upgrade items and progress further, it is something the game should have introduced right after the introductory segment. The biggest flaw is that the endgame is locked behind the character gear level. The gear level can be raised using specific items that can be either grinded in the endgame activities or both with real-world money. Moreover, you can also buy the gear required for progression directly. And regarding the questions whether it's pay to win, yes, it is pay to win, because you can buy the items for upgrades and various additional perks so that you will always stronger than the free-to-play player grinding multiple hours per day. In other words, it will always be faster and more efficient to spend a lot of money for progress, and it seems that Lost Ark doesn't have a ceiling limit for such purchases. But what is more questionable is the reason for paying. Lost Ark does not seem like it's centered around PvP or playing interactions aside from party-based activities, especially when all I've seen to level 50 for bots. It seems that the paid players majorly play to access new content, including more complex and rewarding dungeons, more epic bosses, etc. What is also a viable option that is directly suggested by the game is the creation and development of alternative characters. In simpler words, this is needed because of the limits on the endgame activities once they've reached the highest stage. You cannot grind to the highest level dungeons endlessly. However, you can create and develop a lot of alternative characters so that their rewards will directly be transferred to the main character. Basically, this is one of the reasons people use bots. Another, to use bots to gather in-game gold and sell it for real-world money. Both these aspects of the game are directly overlooked and ignored, which obviously spoils the feeling of the game. This is especially true when you spend a lot of time grinding for the certain item, or a lot of gold, just to see one player buying it for microtransactions officially, and another unofficially from bot and account. Gladly, you do not necessarily need to grind the campaign with each new character you create. For example, after reaching Varen region, I was given a special pass for the new character to use and get the minimal required gear to start doing the endgame content. Thanks for that, at least. Despite the fact that I still haven't grinded through the whole endgame, we have definitely gathered enough first impressions that the newcomers may experience just like I did. It is necessary to conclude that Lost Ark is a fun game that is buried under a hundred of layers of tiresome filler content, boring stories and questlines, a lot of grind and a lot of meaningless clicking just to progress. And when the game starts offering some fun, it equally balances it with a lot of pay to win and loopholes for button which obviously needs more attention from the Amazon or whoever is possible. Imagine a game that may potentially have the same level of flashiness in combat, the responsiveness and punchiness of controls, more items that make your grind rewarding and giving a sense of progression, but without the convoluted stories and boring quests and without any complexities of builds and skills management. That will be the moment that Lost Ark 
starts looting players, especially when this new game will not have any button problems. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please click a like and if you're here for the first time, consider subscribing to the channel. Share your thoughts about Lost Ark and your first impressions about this game down in the comments below and let me know which MMO or any other game should I play for my future video. As for now, I thank you all for watching. My name is Alex B and I'll see you in the next one.